2005 in Mexico, and I was incarcerated and tortured and everything. I, I did understand that all these monsters I named in my book were really worried about um, defamation. Uh, while I was uh, in trial, this um, guy, Carmen Nassif, the one who asked the governor to arrest me and torture me and put me in jail, he kept insisting that even though they did what they did, I harmed his reputation as a very rich and powerful entrepreneur in Mexico. So I keep thinking about what reputation means to a master like him or like anybody else. And I thought um, the typical journalism uh, motto is follow the money and you'll find the crime. But then um, I keep thinking, you follow the money, you find the crime, and then you name all the means. You cannot stop me. <coughs> you cannot just say there are certain kind of traffickers in some places that, don't, that do this and that and name the names of victims. <coughs> we shouldn't do that. This is a, something that journalism around the world has done forever, and we have to stop that. We, of course, have to recognize the victimization of women and children around the world, and of course, men. But we do have to say who is doing it, how are they doing it, and why are they doing it. So after I, I, I ended, the, I won the trial after one year, um, I started giving these lectures everywhere. And people kept asking, you know, especially mothers and fathers that were really, really worried about their children or their daughters or being adopted by traffickers. How can we? <coughs> protect our children. Who is doing this? How are they getting all this money? How are they moving the money around? Are they linked to each other? How come if my daughter was uh, adopted in Tijuana, Mexico, uh, I got an SMS message from somewhere, from someone in Japan saying they met her there. How could my daughter end up in Japan? So I, I started investigating and asking Interpol agents and FBI agents and all kinds of policemen, good and bad, stupid and intelligent all around the world. And uh, everybody kept telling me, oh no, Miss Kachu, don't go there. The mafias are not linked together. They are not linked. The Mexican cartels are not working with the Russian mafia. Everybody is independent. This is not what you imagine. So I said, well, if they insist so much that this is not happening, then it must be happening. <laughs> so I decided to start interviewing all these victims. I met this young woman. I, I tell the stories in the book, so I'm not going to tell the whole story. But I, I met this young woman that was um, convinced that she was going to be a model. She was, got, um, she was caught up in uh, Venezuela. She was very, very young. And uh, they convinced her she was going to be a model because she was so pretty. And they would send her to, through a model agency to Mexico. So they sent her, but instead of becoming a model, she became a sex slave in one of the nicest and fanciest clubs in Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, when she escaped and I interviewed her in the shelter, and she said exactly everything they did. She knew everything. And Helen knows this, and everybody that works with victims and survivors knows this. The real experts in trafficking are the victims. They do know exactly what happened. They do know the captures. They do know the means. So we, as journalists, must know how to interview them. So I did interview her, and I started tracking the path back to Venezuela. And I got this idea, and I said, hey, I'm going to make a map, a world map. And I'm going to tra track back some victims and victimaries from different countries to try to find how they do it and, and go back in their steps. So I wrote on this plan. I had a huge map in my studio, and I started marking all these the countries and the names of the victims, and I interviewed all these people. I went to my editor, and I said, listen, I'm going to travel around the world. I want to go to 141 countries. I want to follow the mafias pretty much every country in the world. And I want to prove that they are linked together. And this is an enterprise. This is not um, a disorganized crime. This is a real enterprise that is giving, that is giving them trillions of, of uh, 
dollars every year, and they are making money out of selling human beings. And my editor said, sure, go. <laughs> Uh, he gave me some money, and then I started getting money from my friends and my family. And I started the trip. So I went around the world doing that. I dressed up as a nun in order to get into the yeah, feminist dresses <laughs> up as a nun. No wonder. I, 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 I wanted to know exactly how many children, how many little girls were there being exploited in the brothels in Mexico City in a very, very dangerous area in which no journalist dares to go in. Uh, the pimps are really dangerous and organized crime is, has complete control of the area and of course linked to the local police. So the only way I could go in was dressed as a nun, walking with the local nuns that would go there, you know, giving them their blessings and uh, some food to the, to the prostitutes and, and uh, helping people. So I dressed up as a nun, I walked there, I met pimps, and um, I saw the little girls, and I could recount 162 little girls under eight years old being prostituted in Mexico City, while we had a law against sex trafficking, and of course, a law against uh, child exploitation. Uh, outside the brothels, there were always police patrols, always. I had my uh, camera, a little camera, <coughs> my little one dress and I sort of, uh, tape almost everything and then I dress up as a prostitute in order to dance in different clubs around the world because I found out you know I kept calling my friends uh, journalists from everywhere like the Washington Post and the New York Times and I asked them have you uh, gone into the investigation of uh, trafficking in Cambodia, Thailand, the Philippines or Saudi Arabia and they said yeah sure I did uh, you just go to this club and that club, and I'm like, okay, but you're a man. I can't go as a woman. The only way a woman can go there and interview and uh, the woman and uh, check out the ambience, it's dress up. <coughs> so I did. It was really hard. I had to learn how to dance. I had to dress up, not to be recognized. And it was a really, really tough job. So anytime anybody tells me that, it's a happy life, the life of a prostitute or of a pole dancer, then don't believe them. It's really hard, it's really tough, it's discrimination, it's sexism, it's really violent, and they treat you like shit all the time, everywhere, even in the fanciest clubs in the world. So anyway, I went around the world, I, do I documented a uh, traffic organ in Israel, in Palestine, I documented sexual exploitation of children, of women, uh, of girls and boys, child pornography, and uh, and I did prove uh, how all these mafias are linked together. The ones from Venezuela, Argentina, Colombia, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. I went to um, Afghanistan and uh, documented and got into a truck to go from the border in Afghanistan all the way to Kyrgyzstan to prove how they put the little girls and the opium together to cross the border. So the girls were for sale, also the drone was for sale. And I could document all this around the world, and this is what my book is about.